Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another sequence video. Uh, this one is in Revelation 5 and, um, you know, it's amazing. You know, this one goes into more detail about the book of Revelation being revealed to the God's elect and so um, it's incredible. And so what I've shown essentially is that almost every chapter in Revelation honors that sequence and then when you put the chapters in the uh, correct sequential order then it honors the sequence as well. And it's that sequence that I went and looked for that everywhere including the Apocrypha and, you know, you find it. And it really illuminates the Bible and then, um, you know, reveals the truth underneath it because really all of it is prophecy when you look. Sometimes you don't have to look even one level deeper and interpolate it. It, it just, it follows that exact pattern because God has been doing the same thing ultimately throughout human history. But just in the last days, it's like updated technology, you know, and that type of thing. And it applies to more people, but it's the same you know, God behind it, which is incredible. So Revelation 5 reaffirms that. And I just thought this one was amazing because it goes into like the seals, you know, and then God sealing his elect and then the process for that to happen, what needs to happen first. And um, so I'm going to add this one to the collection. Revelation 5 verse 1, and I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So if you have a book, it is the Bible. You go to the back of the book and then it, let's say it has seven seals on it. What's that locked up? What is that, you know, um, secured? And, um, you know, it's the book of Revelation that's on the back side. Okay. And so it says here, I sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. So the last book of the Bible is sealed with seven seals. Okay. And then only one individual um, is able to loose those seals. And that's what, and something has to happen first before that can be done. And that's Christ's sacrifice. And so right after Christ was crucified, ultimately the end times began. Okay. And then those seals were progressively being opened. And then in the last days, the end of the end times, God's elect are sealed, you know, with the truth. Okay. And then they're able to understand the book of Revelation and then go find that everywhere. And so that's what I'm testifying that I'm able to do now. And then the people now that come by my channel. So that's what it's saying, you know, in Revelation uh, 5, verse 1. Verse 2, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Verse 3, And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 4, And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Okay, and so only Christ is worthy to do that. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. So after Christ was crucified, he's taken up in a so-called UFO. And then this scene, this ceremony is taking place. Okay, and this happened a long time ago. And then it goes through the sequence. Okay, so it's relevant till, till now. <clears throat> and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. That's so if I believe that's symbolic for all the spirits, you know, it's like God with all of his, his angels. It's like a huge ceremony that's taking place in the spirit world. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, uh, which are the prayers of the saints. So, uh, up until there, up until verse 7, we have God opening and releasing, the, you know, opening and breaking the seals, revealing the book of Revelation to his elect. And then now we're going to have a reference to the saints, you know, and then them being redeemed. So, verse 9, um, and they sung a new song. So now that they're told what is in Revelation, and they can now sing a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain. Okay. And so this is God's elect being sealed. And so this is an amazing thing. So it's only God doing this. And then ultimately those angels are the ones that are sealing God's elect in Revelation 7. And now we're going to get a reference to them being saved and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of, sorry, and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So God's elect are going to be in all nations. They're going to look like all different types of people. And so, and has redeemed us. <clears throat> This is the group that's redeemed, you know, amongst men. That's described in Revelation 7 and Revelation 14. Really, actually, everywhere throughout the Bible. It talks about salvation. 
Verse 10, it has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So these are the kings. Okay, this is the government in the kingdom. So we have up to nine, half of verse nine. It's talking about the elect being sealed, and then the rest of nine and 10 talk about salvation for God's elect. Okay. And then now we're going to have a coded reference to the gospel being preached worldwide. <clears throat> uh, and I beheld and heard the voice of many angels. Okay, the gospel is going to be preached during the great tribulation by angels, according to Revelation 14, 6. Round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. So in the last days, the gospel, the everlasting gospel is going to be preached by angels. And those angels could actually be the elect themselves. But so now we have salvation, then we have a time of the gospel being preached by angels. And then now we have a time of Christ returning to, and this is the translation of kingdoms that's described in Revelation 11. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is a lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So now he's coming to destroy. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So this throne is a so-called UFO. It's going to be huge, okay? This a rock card without hands, as described in other parts of the Bible in Daniel. <clears throat> Verse 14, And the four beasts said, Amen, and the four and twenty uh, elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. So this is a coded reference to the kingdom. That's in verse 14. With God's elect ruling. And so here in Revelation 5, we have the sequence of the end times again. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.